Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and you're very welcome to this video about houseplants. So today you may recall that around about Christmas time I developed a, well, how can I say, a bit of an obsession for plants that you grow on moss poles and converted a couple to the moss poles. So today what I want to do is give you an update on those plants give you a little glimpse at some of my aroids and there will be a few orchids in flower too so stay tuned you are very welcome to my kitchen and today we're going to have a look at a couple of house plants now the kitchen is the largest room in my house as is I guess the habit here in Ireland, a lot of houses have very large kitchens and small sitting rooms. And therefore I take the opportunity to grow a variety of house plants here, especially on the north side, because the south side is over there by the sink. So the north side is, you know, I mean, it's conducive to growing some plants, but you do have to be careful because north side in this part of the world means less light. Now, before I show you those plants, I just want to start off by, well, saying a few words about my Monstera Deliciosa, which is this plant here behind me. And as you can see, it is a bit of a monster. And this is quite an old plant, one I inherited from my mother. And I, I've, well, I've done several videos about it. But what happened more recently, and you may notice that this plant is looking much more upright than it was before it kind of lay that way. Um, and there was a kind of gap in the middle. And I thought it was good for this space in the room. But what happened is that one of the stakes broke and the result was that this arm of the plant went foom and fell down and I had to replace it, which of course is quite a big jo job with a plant this size. And I decided when I put the new stake in that it would be more stable if the new stake went upright rather than out there like that, which it was doing before upright. And with the other one on the other side, the wooden one, which you can actually see, and then I could tie the two of them together and um well you know the plant looks quite well like this now as a result of this it was taller than it had been so i did have to remove a couple of leaves at the very top not the stem but a couple of leaves and well it's not an ideal thing to do because with a lot of aroids what happens is the upper part of the plant is the most mature it's the most likely to have big leaves so if you cut them off then um well i, I don't know are you getting rid of the best part of the plant and in fact previously when i cut off a branch because it was just getting too unruly the result was that the plant re-sprouted new leaves that were smaller than the previous ones had been which is not ideal but you know when you're trying to deal with a monster like this in a living home environment you do have to make compromises so that's the monster i'm doing very well and i do apologize for the confusion because i think when i put up my instagram post i said um, that this plant had a retie Anyway, the spell check <laughs> messed that up and the result was a lot of people thought I was getting rid of the plant, which I'm not. I just re-tied it. Okay, so now let's have a look over here at the north side of my kitchen where I have a number of nice plants. Those are my jangles I got in Thailand. Anyway, it's far too dark to show you what I mean. Here, I'm going to take the plants over there to where the monstera was so that you can see them a bit better. The first plant I want to show you is this monstera adansonii. And um, <laughs> somebody said to me in relation to the garden recently how I should not show just the good things that they liked when I also saw the uh, things that weren't doing so well. So we're gonna start off with this one that isn't doing so well. So 
normally Monstro Deliciosa, the big guy you see behind me, he does not do well on a moss pole because he's far too vigorous and there's really no need for it. But this one, Adansonii, is supposed to lend itself very well to growing up a moss pole. And at Christmas time, you saw me, you know, kind of uh, pot it up. It's not doing so well. Now, I was away, as you know, for a good while when I was in uh, Malaysia and Thailand and my plants were being watered by well my daughter and my son was in charge of the moss poles and when I got back it wasn't doing well and I actually found that the moss had become quite dry down in the middle bit so perhaps that it had something to do with the fact that the plant isn't doing well but as you can see there have been a number of yellow leaves and there are brown tinges on a lot of the leaves and it just seems to be quite extensive and I don't think I can really blame that due to lack of moisture. I think perhaps the opposite is true and that the medium is perhaps not well drained enough. I used a medium that was suited to well to this kind of uh, monstera plant but you do need to have an extremely well drained medium if you're going to use the moss pole because the moisture drains down so i think it needs a repot and also i don't see that the nodes here on the plant are the points where the roots will appear and go into the moss pole and it doesn't seem to be happening so this one is not doing so great. Well, I did tell you I had a bit of an obsession with the old moss pole thing. And as a result, I've had, I've bought some new plants and put them on moss poles. One of which is this Syngonium pink blush, I think it is. And isn't it just absolutely gorgeous? Just look at those leaves. Now I think the pink color isn't as pronounced as it should be, probably need a bit more light, but it is absolutely fantastic. And I potted it up on a moss pole and it is doing really well. And I can tell that even though this was done like relatively recently, already we have roots and they're going into the moss. So that's a, a good result and I'm very happy with that. I did get another one. So you're probably not very impressed with this tiny little plant, but actually this is the best way to buy plants that you want to grow on a moss pole. Get them small so that they grow and adjust onto the pole rather than having something that's quite well developed and is concentrating all its roots in the medium in the soil down below rather than concentrating on aerial roots, which is what you want these uh, plants to do and this is one that was um, on my wish list for a long time it's pothos epipremium happy happy feet happy feet no happy something or other anyway i had been looking for it under the name of mandula which it also goes by but this one and i'm going to put both of those names up on the screen is just a synonym for the mandula and it's one that supposedly lends itself very well to a moss pole and has these beautiful cream leaves which are just fantastic if you can keep them going and as with pothos i mean pothos is basically bulletproof it is a plant that well you know <laughs> i believe it even it grows in the dark it uh, like uh, deals with all kinds of abuse in terms of watering or non-watering so it's a very good one for this and it looks fantastic when i was in malaysia i saw the most amazing variegated pothos growing up a palm tree oh my god i spotted it from a distance and I'm inserting that photograph here from a temple and it was just the most amazing thing. And it really put pothos in my mind. And so when I came home in earnest, I started looking out for this one and I was very delighted to get it. Now I do notice a couple of brown bits on the leaves, but nothing to worry about because actually, you know, all plants, they lose some leaves. Uh, over the course of time and this one already is growing uh, roots that are going into the moss which is just the most uh, wonderful result really in terms of watering for all of them i know i originally said when i potted them up that a uh, an upside down plastic bottle with holes punched in the lid put it on here and just leave it and let the water trickle down but that's not actually what I've been doing. I just 
fill up a jug with water and very gradually pour it in over the top allowing it to come down now it does ooze out the front where the holes are but as you'll recall I have poles that are enclosed at the back so it doesn't come out there so I find this quite a good method for making sure that my sphagnum moss is well hydrated and there is oh two more to show you so this is my philodendron and this is one that's kind of you know it's never going to it's not really a climber but by having a moss pole behind you give it the opportunity to grow its root system without having an enormous pot although i think actually my pot size is a bit larger than it need be and um it's doing okay this just seems quite slow and you'll see it's pushing out a new leaf here and um, well, yeah, there's stuff going on. This one, it's just slow, slow. I don't see it going into the moss yet, but I'm not worried about it because this is one that will be just that little bit more reluctant to get going. And let us not forget, of course, putting aside aroids because the last plant that I put in a moss pole was not an aroid at all. It was my vanilla. Now, I think I'm going to have to stand back for this because this is a tall, tall plant. It is doing so well. I am so delighted with how this plant is doing. I have even put an extension onto the moss pole at the top. So I've got three poles here, although the middle one is overlapped a good bit. It's, you know, just for stability. And this um, a vanilla, oh, wow, it's just gotten going. I mean, look at it. Up, 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 up it goes. And there are two shoots. I'm just bending down now so you can see how, how far up it goes. There are two shoots that are up that pole, like, I don't know, like a pole cat. Do pole cats go up poles? But I also noticed that down below, because of course these were several cuttings in a pot, down below I do notice that two of the other plants are also getting a hold and getting their roots right into the sphagnum. And that's exactly what you want. So delighted with how well this one is doing. It's just marvelous. And again, when I was in Thailand just recently, I was lucky enough to catch sight of the most enormous vanilla you're ever likely to see. Now I'm inserting here the footage of vanilla siamensa, which of course is the Thai vanilla. It's not in flower, but we don't need it to be in flower to appreciate it because any vanilla that you do grow in your own home, you're probably unlikely to ever see flowers. So you must appreciate it as a climbing plant. And my goodness, look how enormous this brute is. It's climbing up, up, up. It's surrounded by, um, well, there's a waterfall very nearby with lots of water vapor, so it has plenty of humidity. And you can see also that this vanilla has little roots jotting out to the side in the same way that my vanilla plant at home does. And this one has just, oh my goodness, it's climbed up on the railings, it's gone everywhere. An absolute joy to see. It's just so wonderful to see plants in uh, an environment where they love to be and where they're doing so well. Now, this clip is not from the wild. This clip is from the Botanic Gardens, Queen Siriket Botanic Gardens up in Chiang Mai, but it is grown beautifully and I do love that. And I guess um, just before I finish off with this quite uh, short update video, I do have a couple of orchids that I want to show you. So the first orchid I want to show you is this one called Shari Baby, which I've had for a very long time. And it is in flower at the moment, such a glorious, glorious scent. They say something between chocolate and vanilla. And so it's quite apt that I've placed it here beside my vanilla plant. 
So if you're on the fence about whether or not to get an Oncidium, I really recommend this one. It does kind of need cooler temperatures in the winter to get it to flower well. I have it in my bathroom, so it really is like no nonsense. It <laughs> tougher than others, let's just say. As you can see, this spike isn't fully open yet. I still have a handful of flowers at the very top that are sure to regale me soon with their gorgeous blooms. And I notice down at the very bottom too, it has a few unopened flowers, which I think is quite strange. And here we have a path in flower. And this one is called Lianum, and I've had it for eight years. So eight years ago, Archie, who used to have a YouTube channel, sent this to me and, well, you all know the story of my scale. This is one of the plants that survived from that period of time, together with the other ones that you're seeing today. And it is fading now a bit, the flowers are going over, but it still flowers regularly and I'm very happy with it and I always think of Archie when it comes into bloom. As you can see, it has flowered. This is the second flower spike that it's produced this year and the top one has gone over. I was away when it came into bloom, so that's why it didn't get staked up properly. It really is quite a large flower and you can see that by my hand going in there. I don't know, do the flowers get larger as the plant matures? As we know, this is quite a mature plant now, but certainly it's well and truly opened and well, very attractive. And then finally, we have another uh, orchid, this time from the Cattleya Alliance, and this one is Randii. So it's an encyclia I've had for eight years, and it is just coming into bloom, just bursting open. So if this flowers in the next few days while I'm editing the video, I will put a little clip of this at the very end. And that brings me to the end of this moss pole and orchid and aroid update, which I hope you've enjoyed and I hope you'll check back. And if you are experimenting with moss poles, then um, I would be very happy to hear your updates on how it's going for you and what you've learned. Thanks as always for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye!